popular people still watching it it's about beer rings and what beer rings are is they're these goofy earrings that I'm wearing and they're made out of beer caps and of course you can use soda caps you could use plain ones and decoupage them. you could paint them, whatever you want to do but I have my own special way of doing this. this is not a new idea but my way of doing this is a little bit different and it's a little bit more finished off so I'm going to show you from the beginning to the end how you can make them too it's not hard, so come on over here and let's do it. Okay, guys, so here we're going to do it. We're going to make some earrings today, some beer rings. And what it starts with, of course, is um, pop bottle cap, so bottle cap, or a beer cap, or, you know, anything that's in this shape. It's like this. You can get plain ones from the craft store sometimes, um, but you could decoupage or whatever. I've never done that because I love the graphics on the old soda caps. I try to use old ones. Um, of course, the Stella caps are not old. Um, these are not that old. They're kind of like reproduction. I guess they still make pure wine. I don't know. Somebody's telling me they do. Um, but if you get just one little tip I want to tell you right now. If you get the old, old ones that have cork inside, you'll have to take the cork out because they won't smash down right. So just tell you that up front. If that's what you have, take the cork out, cork out. And one mention I would make to you before you do that, check to make sure that it doesn't have very important advertising on it, like Moxie, Old Coke Cap, Felix the Cat. I'm still looking for another one of those. Um, any old ones you might want to look up first and find out if they're collectible. Some are worth money. People don't know it. And you don't want to ruin anything that, you know, is worth money. Okay, having said that, let's proceed. All right, so I'm going to use cheer wine today. These are my cheer wine earrings that I made for this video. And all you need, really, is you need a cap of your choice, whatever you want. We have the cheer wine caps at the site. If you're interested in just getting some, we have some, and they're very expensive. And then it all goes to do, has to do with this 32 millimeter flat turtle back setting because this is going to go in here. And then it's going to get pronged in, drilled out, and made into an area. So I'm going to show you how you go about that. But this is how it will look when you're done. And I'll show you the backs too. Just like this. So you really got that smashed down because you got it all flared out around the edges real nice and on this one too what i like about these these aren't signed for some reason i always signed them but you can you could take dremel tool and just sign them too you know if you want but the main thing is you get squished down real flat okay so let's see how i did on these pretty good it could be smashed a little more but it's good it's pretty even too you want to get it kind of even a little bit off to the side doesn't matter it's still fine but anyway so i'm going to show you how you go about doing that it all starts like this. I take my flat nose pliers and I take my soda cap and I get in around the edge and I just start pulling it out. Just pulling it out straight out as much as I can. This is just the preliminary because you're gonna, when you're done with this, doing this, <coughs> You're going to smash that middle down flat. So we're going to have some noise in this video. So if you don't want to be making any noise, you better mute this way down when it comes to that. But I'll tell you, I'll remind you. But um, just pulling this out to start with. And it's the process of getting it, you know, to look right how you want it. And remember, you're going to use two of them. So you want to get them done so they look pretty much the same. You know, they, these look the same. And you want to get them down. This one's a higher than this one but not that much the idea is and everybody likes it is to make it look like her truck ran over it <laughs> found items at their best and they look look a little dinged up a little worse for the wear but you don't want it to interfere with your graphic that's the main thing so i've got this flared out pretty good and don't worry if you ding it up a little bit as you're flaring it out that's perfectly okay because after all we're going for that found item look. Okay, so now take these out of there. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to smash it. And here's where you have to watch out for your fingers. I have my little 
cushion pad, and I have my steel bench block. For me, these are a must have. You gotta have steel under it to get it to flatten and look right. I mean, you could do it on cement, I suppose. You could do it uh, on wood, but it's not gonna be as good. It'll probably damage something too. So this way, this is what it's for. So I'm gonna turn it this way first, keeping my fingers out of the way the best I can. Um, pulling back on it, but still have to get it down. I'm just gonna start tamping on it. This is a, this is a chasing hammer, by the way. Usually we have a few on the side. I don't know if we do right now, but you can check the tool section. So I'm just gonna tamp it all down. I think, can you see this is starting to curl back up here? Um, we'll take care of that, don't worry about it. Now you might say, well, why don't you just do that to begin with? Well, you could, but it's really better this way. Take my word for it. Just be careful to keep your fingers out of the way. Now you're gonna notice this is kind of caving in. That's okay. You wanna get it as flat as you can. It has a ball peen edge. You can even go around in here a little bit. Sometimes that helps. That's when that rounded edge is called ball peen. Ball peen chasing hammer. Whatever's good for you. You probably have better hammering technique than I am, that I do. I don't work with metal in this way a lot. I mean, I used to, but I just don't so much anymore. So anyway, so you can see that's cupped up all the way. Now, if I put that in like that, just to give you an idea, it would fit, but you'd have trouble. This would go up and over. It'd be clumsy. I don't care for it. If you like it like that, then you'll have to fiddle with it and find out how you can make it work. So what I'm going to do is after I've done this, I'm going to go back and I'm going to pull this out again and keep smashing it. You might have to do this process a number of times. Didn't I tell you I was going to tell you what I'm going to hammer first? I forgot. Oh, well, we're making beer rings. Beer rings. Yeah, I mean, ever since I made that, that video a long time ago, people still call here sometimes and they'll special order, they'll buy like... 200 turtle backs at a time, things like that. I think it's one of the things on my website that's most likely to sell a whole bunch of them and sell out quick. So if you go to my website today, you want to buy them, and you look and you find they aren't there. We have them in brass socks, raw brass, and silverware, silver plate right now. Um, if you find we're out, you can just um, send Jordan a note, jordan at basicboutiques.com, and ask him when they're coming in. I do have a load of them coming in uh, sometime next week, so it won't be long. And after that, I have a bucket load of them coming in. So they come in all the time. I'm always, they're always on reorder. We usually never have to wait long. So, okay, so I've pushed it out again. So now I'm gonna keep smashing on it. This time I'm gonna go on the edge all the way down. It's still curling up, that's okay, we'll get that. Just get it. You know, this is up to your eye, but you do want to get it smashed up good. And uh, once again, keep your fingers back. If you're afraid that if you get going fast, you'll uh, smash your finger, then don't go fast. Okay, so you can see what it looks like on the back. Now, we're going to take advantage of this on the back, and we're going to smash it some more. We'll get some of that curve out. And that's going down nice now. And this too, it won't ding it up too much. Although a little dinging up is in order. I love beer caps. I love them from the microbreweries and the funky old ones from pop bottles and stuff. It just To me, they're part of pop culture. But I'm always very careful that um, if I get this hunch about it, that it might be something special. I'll look it up before I start banging around on it. The last I knew, Felix the Cat Cap was going for between 10 and 15 bucks. And by the way, I would buy one if anyone has it because I used the last of mine. And I wish I had another one. Okay, so here we go. Tier wine. It's all the way down. Looks pretty good compared to this one. It's, you know, it's down about the same amount. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is... I'm going to mount it in 
Yes, and I'll take this away so you can see a little bit better. Although I'm going to need it again. Okay, normally what I do when I'm putting something in a prong setting like this is I'll do opposites. So I want to first look and see, okay, that's pretty even all around. I want to make sure I keep it that way. So I'm going to press down as hard as I can. This is a little bit hard. I like to do it partly with my fingers. See, it moved it over. I felt that. So keep it pushed down this way and pull this. And be careful when you're moving the prongs too because, um, you know, they're just stamped brass and... You don't want to end up with your prong coming off. That's going to be pretty even now. So I just take and push my prong all the way down, pull it over a little bit more, and then just crimp it down with the flat nose. Okay, good. Do the same with this one. Crimp it down. Very good. Very good. Okay, so now doing the other ones is going to be a cinch because we have those down holding in place, and so now you're not going to have to fuss as much. You want to get the prongs down about the same, you know, evenness on both sides. Sorry, my hands are shaking. Okay, so we've got good so far. Okay, so it's down. So just to show you again how that ought to look. Looks like this is really good. This came out good. I don't, I don't even think I'm going to have to hammer it again. Yes, I think just for the sake of it, though, I'm going to hammer it one more time. But I'm going to do it this way. Just be sure that's all flared up. And you'll see why in a minute. You might say, what does it matter? Who cares? I'll show you why it cares. you got, you got to care. Okay, so that's done. Get that out of the way. Down with the banging. Okay, now. Of course, if we're going to hang it on something, we're going to have to make a hole. We're going to have to make a hole. We're going to do that. Okay. So how will we make our hole? There are a couple of ways you can do it. I prefer to drill it. And to do that, I take it, I put it on my bench block. I have to, this is the first step to any way you're going to make a hole in it. Okay. I'm going to figure out where the center is. I'm eyeballing it. If you can find a way to do it and get it precise, fine. This is a center punch, by the way. Okay. We should have them at the website. If we're out, give me a holler, and I'll make sure we get them again. They're not expensive at all. And if you don't have a center punch, you can use a great big fat old nail. And it will work good, too. I prefer the center punch because it's a little gentler and, you know, you may not want it to go through. You might prefer to ding it and then drill it. But um, anyway, I use the, I use my center punch. So I'm going to eyeball it and get it as much in the middle as I can. Uh, about to there. It's gonna be good. And I'm going to take this and tap it on the end. It's kind of pointed on the other end. Okay. I don't know if you could see that, but there's 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 a little ding right there. So it's no by no means is that a hole, okay? But if you make a really good ding, in fact, I could ding that a little bit more if I wanted to. See, usually you can find it with when you. Yeah, here it is. Um, I could have got that centered a little bit better. It's not too late to change it either. I'm gonna just ding that out. Push that out a little bit more. Yeah, you might want to measure it. I don't usually, but then I've had some disappointments too because I don't. So I'm going to hit it again. And when you hit it, make sure it's going straight in and see it went down in there because you don't want it to skid out and then you won't have it where you want it. You won't have it ding where you want it to be. Okay, you can get that out later. Okay, so here's your choice. You can take that and run it up under drill and get your hole in it. Or if you have strong hands, you might be able to use your hole punch. Now, I will tell you, if you do very much of this with your hole punch, you're going to need a new nib before too long. We don't have them at the site, but I can get them, and I probably should. But anyway, um, I'm just going to put that in there and show you. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it or not, because you got to go through two layers you know, the, you have to go through the cap and also the turtle back. 
But at least maybe this way I could get a little bit better of a pilot hole to drill it and go faster. But if it's going to go through, you'll feel it give. I don't know that this one will. Almost. There's almost a hole there. So if you had a nail, you could go ahead and slam it with a nail and, and get it through too. So there's different ways. I prefer the drill. The drill's a little more professional, but don't have to. Put it where you want to. And so then what I'll do is I'll put another one down here at the bottom so I can hang something from it. You see? So I can hang something from it underneath. If you don't like that look, if you want to just do this part and don't have any dangling, fine. It's up to you. You're going to play with this and you're going to make it your own. And that makes me happy to think of what you might come up with. You can show me then. Okay, so get your hole in it wherever you want it. Drill it out. Then, if you want to, I don't have any rivets down here to show you, but I will get demonstrate a little bit. We'll do rivets another day. <clears throat> but you can see in my Stella, I finished my holes with a tube rivet. It's a 332, I think it's 332 rivet. It's, it's, it fits with a 332 build, drill bit. So anyway, it's a small rivet. This is size always carries 332, usually a quarter inch or a fifth of an inch, one or the other. Um, these are brass locks. We have some at the site, and I just put the rivets through. And then I don't have any rough edges because when you do them, uh, when you drill them out and you don't put a tube rivet, then you might have rough edges, but you can make them smooth, okay? I'm going to show you how in the next video on this, but um, you could tube rivet. If you know how to do it, go ahead and do it, and another time I'll show you if you don't. Oh, also, if you want to know how to tube rivet, if you go back in my videos, quite a ways, eight, nine years, there's a, there are a couple of videos on how to, to do a tube rivet, so I do have them, and I'm sure there are plenty of them on YouTube as well to find it. It's very, very easy, but you have to have a tube rivet because you want to pass through the hole. And the reason I do it again is I'm not doing a cold connection really. I'm just finishing my hole so it's nice. Okay, so that's how you do it. Now, um, I'm just going to go through that hammering process one more time to show you because that's the main thing besides drilling that hole. I just, when I had my shop, um, this is different Topo Chico, Agua Mineral. <laughs> Boy, that's an American accent. Okay, so I have never heard of this one either. Maybe you have. But again, all I do is just pull this out, crimp it out, pull it out. Okay, best I can. I, I did this a little bit last night. And then I'm going to smack it. You can see it's already kind of dent, dented. Thanks, Javi. Javi keeps telling me I'm in the wrong place. Okay, so once again, keep your fingers out of the way. Try not to slam it too hard that way. If you get yourself, you won't end up with black fingernails. Whoopsie. It's easy to get your finger. I have got my finger a few times. So if you know a way to be better way to do this, please do. Some people will use... Um, a clip on here and hold it in and pound it that way. Not a bad idea. Maybe even a clothespin or something. There's probably a tool that you can buy, you know, just for that. I don't know what it is. Or maybe I do and just forgot. I just never used it. Okay, now I'm going to take it and just bang out the back. That's the easiest way. And try to get the center so it punches out right. Just repeating this step for you. But this is all the basic things. You know, if you haven't done it before, it might take you a little while. But when I had my shop, people used to come in with their own beer caps and ask me to make a pair of bearings. I used to be able to do it in 15 or 20 minutes. I don't know if I could right now because I haven't done it as much. But um, you'll get fast. Don't worry. You'll get fast. Okay, now I'm going to pull it back out again. Just showing you the process twice. So you walk through it really good. 
And if you have any questions, please leave them for me. I want to know what you think. I want to know uh, if you have questions, if there's anything I can help you with. We do respond, okay? Just be nice, and that's all I have to say. So, like, every time I do a video that has to do with metal, you know, I don't have the best and most wonderful technique, but I get her done, you know. And somebody will say something, oh, this or that, you know. I don't mind if you have an idea for me. I'm happy for it because we all benefit. But nobody likes to be made to feel foolish. So, I wouldn't do it to you, don't do it to me. That's all I got to say about that. Just a happy place. Happy, happy, happy. Okay, so that's basically it. I would probably flatten that a little bit more, okay? Um, but basically, then you're going to put it in here. This one I would, because it's just it's more lumpy than I like to be, but I could I could give it a whack once it's in here, actually. Okay, so I'm going to look on the back and see if I have this flared out pretty good. I do. So I'm going to choose opposing corners. Kind of fold it over. That one's pretty good. Push it over into it so it'll stay, you know, where you want it to. And then this one, I'm going to have to pull this way. Because sometimes they go kind of sideways a little bit. Okay. That's pretty good. Let me look at the back. Yeah, this will do. That'll do, my granddad used to say. That'll do. Boy, I wonder what the chicken's going to think of this. You can make earrings out of that chicken. Sometimes we have the little mini chickens. <laughs> oh, the chicken. Ivy started that with the chicken. Okay, we'll have to see where she puts him in here. <clears throat> okay, so basically it's like that. Not everybody is into this found item. I love pretty pretty. How many times have I told you that? See, this went a little crooked. I need to fix it. But I have to be careful because I don't want to bust the palm. Okay. I love pretty pretty. But I also love funky funky. I love found item art. I love things that are, you know, a little bit less than perfect. I love unique things. But some people would say, oh, I would never wear that. That's fine. Then you like pretty, pretty only. I like it all. Okay. So I'm just going to tamp this down a little bit. And then I'll pull the edges out a little bit more. That way I would be ready to ding it with my center punch. And go for it. A lot of times when I used to make these, I don't have a pair of them anymore. But I used to put the one hole up at the top. And then I might put two down here, even three, one, two, three, and have a bunch of dangles coming from it. It's up to you. Whatever like, you know, whatever look you like. And if you feel like you're able to get three holes in here without mangling it, that's going to be the main thing. Okay, so basically that's how it's done. You just got to get it slammed down and mount it into the mount. And then you need to ding your, your places where you want the holes, make the holes, and hang it on an earring. And voila! I like to put little things on there, you know, hang down two beads and stuff like that. So there you go. So I hope you try it. And after you try it, come back next week because we're going to make the necklace out of it. And that's really cool. So thanks a lot for watching. And oh, also before I forget, if you wouldn't mind, um, give us a little like on our video if you like it. And subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of the good stuff. We're here every Friday. Okay, so have a great day and we'll catch you next time.